Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Midnight Motorsports Fogger 500 on your 2009 BMW 535i with xDrive. Well, the process should be similar for most N54 powered vehicles. We're going to be doing this one specifically on my 2009 535i with xDrive. So let's take a look at what's included with the kit. So we have our fogger plate, which is this. This sits between your throttle body and your intake manifold. And there's two hob switches here, one that activates at 11 PSI, the other that activates at 16 PSI. Once those activate, it sends signals for these two injectors to open, or one at 11 PSI and then the other one at 16 PSI. Both of them are 250 cc. This integrates easily with your existing fuel system, especially when they include uh, parts like this as well as it comes with a gasket for here. And if you don't have a new throttle body to intake manifold gasket, which is this guy over here, now would probably be a great time to replace that as well. So let's take a look at our wiring harness here. So these are gonna be for the injectors here. These will be for the hob switches here. And each one is color coded to which injector it goes to and which switch it goes to. So notice how we have a red here for our 16 PSI hob switch and a black here for our 11 PSI hob switch. So now we have this part of the harness, which is wired directly to power with an inline fuse. And once your battery cover is removed, we can take out fuse number 72 on the E60, which is right here. It's a 20 amp fuse, and this is for your fuel pump. So once that fuse is disconnected, your car may run for just a brief second or struggle to start or you'll get codes, but we're gonna start it just to bleed off some uh, fuel pressure. Okay, and that is an expected result. And by now you should not have fuel pressure. So one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to wanna get easy access to the charge pipe because we're gonna to have to remove that. If you're like me and you have factory uh, location inlets with a dual cone intakes, then this process is a little easier. If you have a factory air box, you'll need to remove that first. So we're going to be removing these, these filters and we're gonna leave the intakes in, in their spot because they're not going to be in the way so much, just the filters will. And then once we have the filters out of the way, we're gonna remove the charge pipe next. And to get these filters off, and I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver and pull these filters out of the inlets. I wanna add one more thing as well. Uh, I would recommend removing this first, just because this is, this can get in the way a little bit and you don't wanna you know put some stress on this and possibly have something break, because remember this is plastic. But moving on from that, what we're gonna do is go down here to this T-map sensor and we're gonna unplug it. It's a little bit hard to see and I can't really get my camera down in there, but there is a, a clip here. It kind of, kind of looks similar to this one over here. So it's kind of about the same plug style and we're just gonna remove that first. So that way we, when we take the charge pipe out, we don't have to worry about possibly breaking those wires. And once you have that harness unclipped, what we're gonna do next is if you have a blow off valve, just disconnect any airline going to it. Uh, this SSQV uh, with this zip tie on it, I can still kind of work this loose. Where it's on there where it's good enough to the point where it won't blow off, but it's also easy to remove. Now I also have methanol injection here. So what I'm gonna have to do here is just loosen up a connection over here or wherever and make sure that my methanol connection is free if you have one as well. Make sure yours is free as well before you start to remove the pipe. Now that my methanol is disconnected, I'm going to go down here and either disconnect from here or here or both, depending on what it takes to get this out. I'm going to give it a try over here first because this is the easier one to slide on for my setup. And then after that, we're just going to remove this clip and then pull the charge pipe off. Now that we have this clamp nice and free, we'll pull this one up here which can be done just with your fingers. And if it's too tight, just use a pick tool. And we'll set this aside somewhere where we'll probably lose it. And then once your charge pipe is free, you verify it's not gonna hit anything. That's when you can start just kind of wiggling this loose. And it should start to come off. Sometimes these can be a bit of a pain to get off, um, but I see mine's moving already and I'm gonna have to put the camera down and use both hands to get this thing kind of worked out. Another thing I should probably mention while we're trying to get the charge pipe out is if you have an E60 like I do, you have a power steering reservoir that's quite in the way and I'll probably end up relocating it for this install. So this needs to come off in order to get this charge pipe out a little easier and that's just going to be two 10 millimeter bolts 
uh, right here and here, and there's nothing holding it on underneath really. It just kind of uh, indexes into its own little hole there, and I'll show you what that looks like. But once these come off, you just kind of twist this guy about a little bit, and then pop this up. I apologize for the wind noise from the fan. It is a little over 100 degrees in my garage right now. So this just kind of yanks up a little bit, and then it will be a little more free. It's Since I don't have a 535, uh, I specific charge pipe. This kind of interferes with this. Um, if you have a 535 specific charge pipe or you're on your stock one, uh, if you're on your stock one I don't recommend doing this job, but if you aren't then um, this might not be in the way as much as it is for me. So I'm going to try my best to set this aside somewhere and then work this charge pipe out at the same time. Your process should be a little easier. Okay so now that the charge pipe is free I'm just going to set it aside somewhere and it looks like I've got a bit of methanol leaking because there shouldn't be any in there, especially while the car was off and I actually have not gone into boost with these new turbos yet. So that's a problem for another time. Also, while I'm in here, I'm going to be repinning this um, with a different style connector and going with the N20 map sensor. However, for this install, because that's not what you're here for, we're going to actually now go and remove these bolts. There's four of them. I believe they are 10 mil. So before you remove your throttle body, what we're gonna need to do here is there's a hose over here, an air hose that you just squeeze the tabs on over here, connected to the throttle body, you squeeze those tabs and then you wiggle this plastic hose loose and it's very easy to break these. So just be careful, take it easy, like mine I think is already broken. So this is something I will have to replace. And once that hose is free, there's also a, an electrical connector underneath here. There it is right here. So we're gonna take that off now, and then we're gonna take our uh, four 10 millimeter bolts surrounding the throttle body off. And once you have removed the throttle body, now we have a lot more space to work with. And that connector that I was talking about, is positioned just like this. So underneath here, you'll see there's a release tab. So that's what you're gonna have to push in here, just at the back there like that. So from underneath, you'll probably just use your index finger and then just kind of wiggle the plug loose because it does have a weather seal, so it might be stuck on there a little bit. And then once you remove those four bolts, then that throttle body comes right out. So once your throttle body's off, we're gonna have to get this uh, junction box off because we're gonna need access to the low pressure fuel line that's right behind it. And to do that, it's sometimes it's easier just to take some of these connections off first. I think we have enough wiggle room without removing them, but we're going to take a, a large flathead screwdriver or a pry bar if you have one and just kind of get in these grooves here and maybe over here too and kind of work this loose. It is a bit of a pain to do, but you'll get it if you keep working at it. Once you have your junction box free, and I should mention if you're gonna try the prying technique, don't push up against the throttle body um, inlet here because you could damage this plastic and have an uneven sealing surface, and then you're gonna need a new manifold. So once that's off, you can unclip the low pressure fuel sensor, either at the sensor itself in there or at the junction box here. And you're also going to wanna to remove the clip for the uh, high pressure fuel pump here. That way we can move the box out of the way just a little bit more to give us more space to get to get right down to there where we need to take this fuel line off. If you have a stock uh, fuel line, yours is going to look like this going into there, but I have a upgraded kit, so mine looks a little bit different. So now that everything's out of the way, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench to take this off and uh, a little short extension, preferably a wobble one, with an E12 socket that's gonna go right over here onto that E-Torx bolt that holds the um, short line, or this uh, short little feed line to the high pressure fuel pump off. So we're gonna take that off, and we're gonna take this off. And then that will allow us to kind of move this line up and give us a little more clearance. Now we have a lot more access and a lot more room to work with here. So if you have a stock fuel line, um, yours is going to be like this, where you're going to have a clip here. I know this isn't the, the same spot, but the connection's exactly the same. And then you just remove that clip. It can usually come off by hand. If not, you can use your um, small screwdriver or pick tool. Then you just push in 
this uh, yellow portion here and then you work this back off and then it should pop right off. So looking at some of the fittings that came with it, we have a short one here with an O-ring and then we have this uh, fuel rail here. These only go one way, so we're only going to be putting the O-ring one into the fuel rail because that's the size that you need here. And then we're gonna tighten that down a little bit, get it snug, nothing too crazy. And with a wrench, not, not just by hand. And then this longer one that did not come with an O-ring will go into here. Tighten this in here. And this did not come with an O-ring or any type of thread sealant. So I'm not sure if that's gonna hold. Um, we're gonna pressurize everything uh, before us reassembling everything. And if that's the case where it doesn't hold, fortunately this is easy enough to access where we can just put something on there like an E6000 or something fuel, like a fuel resistant sealant. And to tighten it down, I'm just using an adjustable crescent wrench and an adjustable um, AN wrench here. And it's kind of using a setup like this. And then I'm just gonna tighten it. Not go too crazy because these are aluminum and they can easily snap. So we'll see how it works with this and hopefully it doesn't leak. Now I'm gonna take the straight end of this braided line and I'm going to thread it onto here. This I know for sure doesn't need sealant because this is a tapered thread and they fit together without any sealant and do not add any sealant to these. So same thing, we're gonna tighten this down. Typically I have a vise where I put um, AN fittings into and then tighten it, but I don't have that vise set up here with me. So we'll just tighten this kind of the same way. Maybe this one on this fitting and then the crescent wrench on the other one. And same type of deal, nothing too crazy. Uh, I can't really give torque figures, but I know by feel that you don't wanna crank these down too much. And once you have your assembled fuel line, what we're gonna do is we're going to plug this into here, just like this, and you should hear a click once it's in. Sometimes you just have to give it a little bit of force, and there you go. And if you heard that click and you feel it, it's not going anywhere, then you're good to go with this. So just remember that when when it's in the car, it's gonna go just, just like this. So you're gonna want it in this orientation. And of course, this actually goes downwards. And then we're going to put the stock fuel or the other fuel line, depending on which, which way yours is set up, back over this, basically as if it was just that. So if you have the stock one, you're just gonna slide it over and then reinstall your um, gray clip. If you have a different type of fitting, you're going to have to secure it the same way that you secured it to this line to begin with. And then we're going to reinstall that back in there. And then we're gonna pressure test it to make sure there's no leaks. So I just ran the fuel pump for a bit. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera here, but that connection where it goes in the T, my suspicions were confirmed that it is not a fuel tight seal. And there needs to be some kind of uh, thread sealant on that connection there because that is not um, an AN fitting. So it's not tapered and it's not going to hold against fuel. So it's been a couple of days because I wanted to get some parts in. I really don't like this whole setup, especially one because of this, this fitting here leaking without any type of sealant. And over time, sealants are prone to failure. So this is the type of setup I'm going to go with. with a, um, this is a Dash 6AN uh, T fitting with one female side and two males out. Because I already have that upgraded line back there, that's going to work perfectly for me. But if you didn't, they do make fittings like this that will go to a 3 8 uh, They're a little harder to find, but definitely worth it because if you have all AN fittings and then your stock factory uh, clip over where it's supposed to be, then that's gonna fit a lot better. You don't have to worry about seals. So I'm gonna install this, put this fitting onto this uh, short line here, and then uh, go and route all this up the right way. So this is what I ended up doing, which I'm a lot more comfortable with because none of these connections now require any type of sealant, and I know they're likely not going to leak. So uh, Franken Turbo, Shuunk, or Midnight Motorsports, whoever actually makes this kit and sells it, I would strongly recommend getting away from this type of connection and doing something like this where there's no sealants required and a much less chance of leaking. So let's install that there and pressure test it and hope for the best. So now that we're pretty confident that that system, that part of the system is not going to leak, we can look at our plate and see that this side has the O-ring, meaning that this side is going to go up against your intake manifold. And also you'll notice that there's notches here and 
corresponding there, these go in the same direction. So that means that this is going to fit over there with this Midnight Motorsports, depending on which generation or what have you of this one you have. It's going to go like this, meaning we can take our fuel line and we can route it over this way, which is awesome because it's a, it'll clear the charge pipe and it's not going to get in the way of the, um, the intakes. So now we just have to assemble this. And to do so, we're going to take our injectors out of the package and we're going to pop them into here. And we're just going to take a very small amount of motor oil, fresh motor oil, and we're going to lubricate the O-rings on both sides of the injectors and pop them in. Just like this, we're going to take just a little bit of Earl, put it on there, and then as far as I can tell, it doesn't really matter which way these injectors go, they're both the same. Just make sure that there's no dust and debris in any of the seats here. So we're gonna pop this in. Now as far as which way the connector should face, I have only seen pictures of them uh, facing towards the gasket side. Uh, but looking at it, it doesn't really look like it matters which way they go but we're just gonna do what everybody else is doing. So now that we have those injectors lubricated and in, we're gonna work with the bracket here, and we're going to start installing this bracket first. We're gonna put the bracket on like this, and the bolts that I got were 532nd uh, Allen wrench, so we're gonna tighten these down a bit. Not gonna to go too crazy with them. And we're gonna do the same thing, remember, that if we're looking at the the plate here with the o-ring side we want this the fuel connection side to go to the left of it so we're going to lube up the o-rings here plop this down and then put the uh, other screws on double check for any debris in the rail i don't see any and we'll just kind of gently work these on we don't want to break the injector we're going to tighten these down a little bit alternating sides a couple turns at a time just like the head studs on your grandmother's buick and we're going to get these snug, not super tight, and make sure you don't get your grimy mitts all up in the uh, injectors there, because that's never any fun. Okay, and for these hob switches, it doesn't really matter which side you put them on. Uh, they're both going to see pressure going into them no matter what. So with these, these are 1 8 NPT. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Again, I was skeptical with those other threads, and I might be a little bit with this. Uh, usually with uh, NPT threads, um, you kind of want some kind of sealant on there. We don't you want to use Teflon in a motor application because Teflon tape can get sucked in and cause all sorts of issues. It doesn't just melt down pretty easily. So those are nice and tight. Uh, didn't go too crazy with them, but just snug enough to the point where I felt like they didn't want to turn much anymore and I was going to force them. So that's about tight enough for, for what I think. Uh, use 15 millimeter wrench on both of them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start looking where to mount this up and then we're going to figure out our wiring. While we have the unit out still, it's a good idea now to plug everything in and to do that, again, I don't think these colors actually matter because they're going to activate when they're going to activate at a 16 and at 11 psi. So. We'll click that over and make sure that's on there good. And we'll do the same with this one over here. Okay, both of them aren't going anywhere. Once those two are clicked on, we can click in the corresponding hob switch with each color. So we're gonna go from black to black here, and then red to red. And then we'll just kind of figure out once it's in the car, uh, if this is the best way to route it or if this is. I'm thinking this will probably be because it seems to naturally like to go this way a little better, but we'll find out in just a moment. Okay, so I more or less put this together um, just for testing out if it was going to leak or not. Primed the fuel pump through uh, Pro Tool, and so far no leaks, which is awesome. It would have leaked by then. I did it for two minutes and checked around thoroughly. Nothing happened. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the things, the junction box back together down there, plug in everything that we unplugged, and then we're going to mount this up and then wire it. What you're going to need to do is you're going to have to install your gasket here that it came with, make sure that this surface is nice and clean, and same with the surface on the intake manifold itself. And then this is where the long bolts that came in with the kit, the four of them, you're going to have to put the throttle body 
or you're going to have to put the, the plate there first, then the throttle body, and then these will go through the plate, or through the throttle body first, then the plate, and then into there, and I'll show you what that looks like now. All right, so that's how it's supposed to go. And for these bolts, you, I don't have torque specs here, but you just kind of want to get them nice and tight, but not too tight. Remember, you are going into plastic at the end of the day. So um, here's another helpful tip, especially if you have an E60. I don't know if it's the same with a, an E90 or something. Your fuel line here for this, uh, for this mini fuel rail, it should go behind the throttle body um, the throttle body air inlet here or the idle air control uh, whatever whatever that is and at this point i need to replace mine because mine no longer clamps in there and it will blow out during boost so um but however if yours is in good condition just make sure you're routing this behind it in this way otherwise it will put way too much pressure on here if it's on this side of it and it will kind of force it out so that's no good so for this it's a little wonky but we can bend it like that and then just ultimately tighten it on there. Make sure you're using gloves, <laughs> unlike me. At this point as well, you're gonna wanna make sure after you plug in your idle air control valve um, hose that you're also going to plug in this connector that goes onto the throttle body itself. So now we're finally at the wiring portion of this job. And for this to work, what you're gonna need to do is wire this onto 12 volts, like a constant 12 volt source. The battery post right there is perfect if you have an E60, if you have a E90 or E92 or uh, E88, E89, and so forth. Um, I'm not really sure, but anywhere that you have 12 volts constant and a good known ground is going to work for you. So I'm going to wire it to that battery post, and I already know that this uh, eyelet terminal is not going to be big enough to go in that uh in that one and I will tell you what size that this one needs if you have an E60. So I ended up using a 5 16 by 14 to 16 gauge heat shrink terminal connector here and then just crimped it, heat shrunk that and threw another piece of heat shrink on there for good measure and that's going to fit that bolt and we're going to get this bolt off with a 13 millimeter. For our ground here we're going to be using this bolt here which is by the power steering uh, pump reservoir and we're going to be able to remove that with an 8 millimeter and the stock uh, eyelet that comes with this will fit that just fine. And once those are in place, you can see we've got a decent connection there and a decent connection there. And it's also one of the reasons I did a little extra heat shrink here was because this is a little bit tight here and this can easily cut into the wire, especially over time. So having that little bit of extra protection is gonna help. And if you've done it well, you should be able to click just like that and then we can make that connection over to here and now if you're worried about parasitic drain there should be none so th this goes pretty much right to the hob switches and then the hob switches go to the injectors which tell it to fire and i just verified with my multimeter that this connection solid and i'm getting the expected 12 volts where it needs to be and I, as an added safety feature i went ahead and zip tied the harness over to this airline there just so that's not dangling and possibly getting caught in the steering column so it doesn't rip or something else worse happens so now it's time to figure out how the charge pipe's going to fit in there and i'm going to hope that i don't really have to do too much with the power steering reservoir but there's a chance i might have to make a bracket so with some finagling i was able to get the charge pipe back into place i, I need a longer boot here because that's not going to be long enough anymore with how much further that pushed that away and the power steering pump, it's not completely squeezed, which is great. There's not a whole lot of crazy kinks, but I think ideally it would be best to kind of have it mounted somewhere lower here, maybe an M5 steering pump. Um, I'll just have to see if that is compatible with this, with the uh, XI and the power steering system here. And maybe I'll make a bracket or something that I can rivet in, like a hole into here and then have a bracket that I'll fabricate to put that there, but that's another time. And the only other thing that I have to do is put the air filters back on, button up a couple things here, throw the spark plugs back on, and should be golden. So that's going to do it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Pardon my state of being, if you will. So if you liked it, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more E60 related stuff, more BMW, more N54 related content. And uh, remember to share it with a friend if it's going to be helpful for them. And remember, as always, keep it foul.